All right, in this video, what I want to run you guys through is my preferred settings for uh, when you initially install Scene, uh, what kind of settings I like to actually change uh, that then make your life a little bit easier, hopefully, in the future. So, open up Scene, go into your general settings, and first of all, maybe mind your units again units in uh, this general tab only uh, refer to viewing meaning these are the display units that actually doesn't matter uh, what you import and export at this point this is really just what you uh, what you actually want to see but um, for the small units I, or small sizes I don't change this this is really up to you what you want the I don't have a preference here um, Typically millimeters is what I have it set to. That way I know how far off in millimeters uh, registration perhaps was uh, reported as. Uh, my first thing that I usually change though is my project folder. I don't like uh, seeing forcing me to uh, save my projects in my documents folder. If somebody wants to take my computer and actually see my data and logs in under a different username, they won't be able to see uh, the data. So I typically change it to create a, a Faro folder on my computer here. So um, you see local drive, definitely something that I recommend having. Fastest drive, meaning solid state drive would be best. So carry on. Show scanning category is the first thing that I usually turn on. If you have an SCD scanner, uh, M or SCD scanner, it's useful to have this because you can do a little bit of uh, compensation and on-site registration. Uh, with the X series and the previous uh, CD scanners, you this wouldn't have to be checked. That's why it is unchecked. But for the newer scanners, it actually adds this tab uh, in your uh, scene software. So once again, we're coming back. Uh, so this is checked. Automatically checked for software updates. I like that. Uh, I do not send any of the data typically to uh, Faro. Import another... Uh, place where you want to verify your units if you change and this is my um, you know uh, recommendation if you change the units here let's say to US survey feed I will change the import units as well as the export units into US survey feed that way I'm always on the same page as to if I hit export or if I hit import and I see on the screen that I'm selecting US survey feed that I'm not importing meters by uh, by uh, error so uh, importing is there. Processing. Uh, for processing, I always create scan point clouds just for visualization. I typically do not do automatic registration because I want to do it uh, not manually, but at least be in control of uh, that process. I never colorize. So this is the first thing that typically I don't do. I do not colorize. Also laser illuminated HDR. Still uh, not a big fan of it until I'm actually finished with registration. So no colorization on anything that I'm ever doing. I like all these filters on actually, and the defaults are correct. So I'll do my uh, dark scan point filter. You can adjust these values, but again, uh, uh, this is completely up to you. I like it on. Uh, distance, distance filter is an important one, but you want to be careful with your uh, distances here. So make sure that if you have uh, a long distance scanner and you really want to go a long distance, meaning that, for example, yeah, the S350, uh, that goes 350 meters. If this um, distance range, well, and we're in feet right now, so let me switch this back to meters just for now. Well, no, let's just leave this for now. Uh, here we go. If we go into the distance range now, so it's 200 meters. So if you have a 350 and you expect the 350 to actually be recorded, make sure that this range is further. Otherwise, if you're using a 350 in a small, uh, you know, area, then you might as well just cut down on noise by reducing the uh, range of it. But I'll leave the 200 for now. Uh, straight point filter I also uh, usually run. Uh, it's a nice tool to eliminate a little bit of noise and you can again adjust your grid sizes and your actual uh, uh, noise in uh, the distance or the straight point filter uh, everything else as far as settings is kind of up to you and there's i'll have a different video on what they what these actually do but uh, kind of up to you the edge artifact filter be careful it, it doesn't have any settings uh, having it on 
is nice. It will make your data a little bit cleaner, but it could be removing edges on your uh, data that you might need might have needed edges on. Edges, as far as like you know, walls and surfaces and building size are still going to be visible. But if you're going to scan something small in size and you remove the edges, you might actually round it off. So make sure that this is something that you keep in mind. Having on for large projects, having off for smaller objects than, I don't know, like a refrigerator or something. There's no easy way of explaining when not to use it, but just be play with this on and off occasionally just to see if it uh, loses detail or adds clarity to your scans. Uh, next, 95% of the time I'm doing target less registration, which means I'm not finding checkerboards, I'm not looking for markers, and I'm not finding planes or spheres. If I do have spheres, these are not the ones that we typically, uh, that I typically use. So please remove the ones that you don't are not using and input the ones that you're using. I'm typically using the 0 0.0725 diameter um, laser scanning America spheres, and then the two uh, 0 0.115 uh, radius spheres, which are the Seco brand 230 millimeter diameter. So this is the 145 millimeter spheres. These are the actual 230 millimeter spheres, bigger ones. And again, if I'm not using any, uh, if I'm not using any, I'm not going to have them in here. If I'm using some of them, I'll say, okay, I'm only looking for the smaller spheres, or I'm looking for both of them. And if so, then I definitely need to have this check. But for now, again, these are general settings. Uh, which tell me that 95% uh, of the time I'm not even going to be looking for them, so uh, it's not on. Uh, handheld processing, only if you're using freestyle scanner, we're not actually delving into that uh, here. In registration, if I'm doing uh, target less registration, I always default to top view base rather than what's recommended for top view and cloud to cloud. And the logic behind that is uh, the top view based always precedes the cloud to cloud registration. If top view based fails, I don't need the program to try to do cloud to cloud. If this fails, this will not work. So doing it in one step just, you know, well, doubles up on time and might actually result in no better results than, uh, well, if uh, it fails, it'll fail even with cloud to cloud. If it succeeds, yes, you might actually save a little bit of time. But I usually want to be in control of what the program is doing. So top view based registration. And literally, I do not change any of the other settings uh, below here. So cloud to cloud is correct. Expert settings. Oh, that's the only other thing that you I recommend changing. In the cloud to cloud, uh, subsampling. If you've gone through training, you understand what that is. That's for a different video again. But uh, cloud to cloud in here, in the expert settings, defaults in the program to 10 meters. This is absolutely outrageously high. So I recommend making this a little bit smaller. So I typically make it um, go to 0.3 meters or one foot. Hit OK over here. So this way, uh, next time you start seeing it will actually uh, default to these values, correct values. I don't change anything here. Use, I'm not a big fan of automatically open 3D view, but this is completely up to you. I like horizontal and vertical distances as long as I'm uh, clicking two points, so it'll uh, break them down for me. I like my inverted mouse. I also like, oh, I dislike the cloudy sky thing, so I usually use a color gradient for my settings or for my background. What else? Uh, Nothing here, nothing here. These are just uh, user preferences. Um, now that we've selected everything, the WebShare Cloud stuff, if you have your username and password, you can input them in here. But uh, that's typically not something that you need to do for when you're processing scans. But you could input them here. All right, uh, I'll switch this back to US Survey Feed. OK, um, there's two more things that actually you cannot set in the general settings, but you have to switch over to this, um, the, the classic user interface. So I'll click this. And in here, I highly recommend changing these values that I'm about to go change. So under Tools, go into Options. And under Matching, I always want to see uh, this Open Properties dialog for created objects. It's a confirmation for me when I'm scanning 
if uh, when I click a sphere or when I ch click a checker target or if I'm uh, clicking a wall, how many points are on it, what is the, the success rate at recognizing it as the object that you're actually defining. And this uh, dialog box you can find even if you don't have it on, even if you have it unchecked, but having it checked uh, brings up that dialog box for you to see right there and then. So uh, leave this, uh, this is what I want to have checked. And then also uh, whoever's gone through my training knows that I'm also an anti-auto, uh, enable auto clustering guy. So I definitely uncheck this this way when you have 10 scans and seven successfully uh, register uh, scene is not going to just make a new cluster out of the seven scans and then leave the three out, but it'll actually register the seven scans, leave the three scans that didn't register in that same cluster, and then it'll be up to you to figure out why they failed. But a um, little bit less confusing. So uncheck this. Mm, that's it. Uh, oddly enough, these settings cannot be set in the new user interface. So I'll switch back to the new user interface. And uh, now uh, it's just telling me that I want to improve software. I can do yes or no, but I'm not participating in the improvement program, so we'll say no. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, another message about updates, but that's uh, the likelihood of me uh, um, explaining to everybody what the actual uh, settings are. Um, and we're done. So hopefully that's it. Now you can start and create your project and uh, work. But these are the settings that you saw that I'm a big believer in uh, for starting your projects and then hopefully getting better and faster results out of it. All right. Well, I hope uh, this was useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.